rut and river. Yes. Correct. R-U-T. I rest my beard hair right on there, it. And then you know you're there. Like a nice, gentle little pillow for my right, beard. Right. And then I'm all up in it. Oh. I'm like Kobe beef for sharks. Can I ask you, what made you guys call me up about, well, this? That's what tickles our fancy. Exactly. Okay. thought the Rocky Mountains would be rockier. <laughs> John Denver is not accurate. Man. A guy like you, who has absolutely no clue, and I can hear it in your voice, that, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you're a blank canvas. I mean, I can just start with you, like, like from scratch. You, you're going to tell me, a grown man, you're telling me what lure to use and how to fish? You guys don't s- snap your whopper plopper off <laughs> either, though. <laughs> but sorry, sorry I, blew I blew up over that. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. You're listening to the Rut and River Pursuits podcast. 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 Uh, I don't even know what to say. We've been hunting, you know, waterfowl in Pennsylvania for a long time. And uh, Stevie, Will, and myself decided to take a Wednesday off work. Not that we called out sick, but. <clears throat> right. So, well, Steve, Stevie's been hunting waterfowl for a long time. Yeah. A long time. Ten hours. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> if you count the drive time down, ten hours. But and his first duck hunt was done in ten minutes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we, we've, been, we've been going up visiting our friends at the Great American Outdoor Show for years. What's it been? Three years maybe now. Mm-hmm. Uh but uh, we decided to head south on a Wednesday to do something a little different than hunting ponds and rivers. And, uh, you know, it was literally, I don't know what took so long. It was a hop, skip, and a jump to come down here to Virginia. But uh, I typically say who's with me. So I'm going to ask, other than Will and Stevie, who's with me. Uh, Teddy Carr, uh, owner of Outdoor Action and uh, part owner of my son's Jeep. GP calls. Nice. Um, the Teddy Carr. Yeah. yeah. The Teddy Carr, like the Rutten River Pursuits. I've never actually heard Travis say your name without the Teddy Carr in front of it. And my name is Travis Stalk. I am the personal giblet to the Teddy Carr. Can you explain to our listeners what a giblet is for those on the West Coast the, that doesn't know what a giblet is? The giblet, you know, every call company and outfitter needs a giblet. Um, and how I got that nickname was from a filmed hunt out there in Texas where I try to make it nice, short, and sweet. Uh, there were pintails working behind us. And there were gadwalls about a mile out in front of us, and I kept on telling the guy who was taking us hunting, watch these pintails behind us, watch these pintails, he's calling at the gadwalls. I'm saying, watch these pintails. Every time he hit that call, then pintails would flare off a little bit. And he finally says, I see the pintails, you little giblet. Nice. So it's like a kickable. And kick then Teddy board. jumps up and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. What'd you just call him? I called him a little giblet. He goes, don't. That's his nickname. It's Don't. born, it's born it's forever stuck. after that. Yeah, stuck on him like a brand. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am branded by GP Calls and Outdoor Action. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah, that that TV show gave me that. Yellowstone, you seen that? Yes. TV, the Yellowstone, yeah. and all them dudes are branded. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about doing that to all my guys. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. See, I'll be the first one in line. See if they'll pony up for it, you know. It's just perfect. stand there and just stick them with a hot iron. Absolutely. You know? I don't think there's any I don't think there's any better way to keep you around forever after that. <laughs> it stings and it makes me feel like a man. Yeah. It hurts so good, boss. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> Let me jump back here real quick before we get into uh, Stevie's first day of duck hunting, like the way we did it. Right. Um, yeah. Let me jump back and ask Teddy, like, where did GP come from? How did how did you get into hunting? Well, um, it goes well. I mean, if you want to dial it back to my childhood, man, I mean, that's I'll take it back even further than that. If you take our family name, if you do the research on it. Uh, back in in Scotland, they were the name Carr was associated with gamekeepers. They were always the gamekeepers for the villages and stuff. So it's deep rooted, man. Yeah, so I've hunted. You know, I've hunted a lot of things and hunted all across the country and different big game animals and ducks by far. You know, once I got older, you know, became what I wanted to pursue. Right. And uh, I had a good friend. I you know I started working this river 30 years ago. And it was all fishing. And uh, I had a friend of mine, Eric Peterson, who talked me into, uh, said, hey, man, let's uh, let's branch out into duck hunting. I want to help you do that and so forth. And and that's how I got started, you know, about, and this is our 20th year out here. From, for the guide service standpoint, Outdoor Action, it's uh, our 20th year out here. And uh, wow, our first blind was actually at Mount Vernon, right in the shadows of where uh, – you know, the mansion, uh, George Washington's home, the mansion there. And uh, we actually, that blind sits in a marsh where he hunted. Right. So it's got a lot nice. of, we got a lot of deep history. Right. You know, here on the river. And 
you know, we just, um, my sons and I just, you know, GP Calls is just an extension sure. of, you know, a very successful guide service, basically. Well, I don't know about the rest of your guide service or days on the river in the last 20 years, but I'm blown away. I yeah. mean, I, I've, I've hunted ducks for not quite as long as uh, some of the other guys that we meet up at the Great American Outdoor Show. When I walk into Duck Hall, obviously, I'm, I'm new to it. You know, I've been hunting eight years or so for myself, eight, ten years, with mostly goose hunting in our area is the predominant waterfowl hunting. But I come down here today not knowing what to expect. I kind of like that. I like adventure. I didn't want to ask a whole lot of questions to Travis, but he doesn't text me back anyhow at 2 in the morning. I mean, I'm awake. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> it's not like he worked hard all day. Yeah. But, uh, no, we. so you can tell it. Like, I'm very perceptive about guys that I've catfished with, you know, saltwater fished with, guys that say that they have passions for things. You can see it in their eyes. After all these years, when those birds come in like fighter jets and we're, we're banking left and banking right today, you can tell that it's in your soul. You love it. Your eyes glare up. Even Pod Dog, even Z Dog, <laughs> is like, oh, what happened? You guys missed. So and so <laughs> he ran all the way to the back of the boat. Uh, Stevie Stevie didn't shoot that one duck when it first come in, and you know there's reasons for that. I'm not going to throw Stevie <laughs> under the bus. Oh no! But the dog do. ran. The, the dog ran all the way past Stevie and jumped up on the back seat of the of of the blind and was like looking at the yeah. duck as it was flying away. Then turned around, and looked, and said, "Dad, take me in. I can't believe you got me out here." That's great. That what you call what what do we call in, down here? What do we call the pump action? You said it earlier. Oh, corn chucker. Corn chucker. The corn. Yeah. The corn. Corn chucker. Well, oh, the man. the trigger on that corn chucker was <laughs> slightly bent. Uh, what okay. happened, Stevie? Stevie, I, I couldn't get the safety oh. off. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> and those ducks are in and out, man. And oh, you there's gotta, no time. Z Dog yeah. may have rolled his eyes the first time. If you would have done it a second time, he probably would have bit you. Oh man, <laughs> he was bending the trigger. Oh, uh, yeah. The that duck all but sat in his lap too. But Stevie, I'm gonna. I want to come to your defense here, buddy. Thanks. When the next one came in, you were dead on him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rolled him. Yeah. Rolled him. Yeah. Killed his first duck, man. I, yeah. That's, that's always a, a good thing. It's a definitely. The Teddy Carr says, Stevie, what kind of malfunction do we have down there? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Teddy yeah. thing to say right yeah, there. That was putting it nicely. I was, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I could tell, you know, he was grim. Well, let's not yell at him, man. He's a kid. He's just getting into this thing. I don't want to ruin him. And I say, well, what are you doing down there? <laughs> Look, another five guys. While we've been talking and starting this podcast, I've been steady watching all these blackheads pour into that pontoon rig about 200 yards out in front of us. Where we just were. Oh, my yeah. God. It's ridiculous There's how many birds we just saw in an easily hour. Easily 20, 30, 40 birds in there right now let's talk about where we are now we didn't we didn't mention that we're actually podcasting right now live from a duck blind on the uh i, I apologize well, i forget the name of the waterway yeah well, go ahead teddy well right here where we're at we're, we're what's feeding out from the left here is the Occoquan river and we're we're sitting in this duck blind is where the river ends and becomes belmont bay and that's off to the northeast um and then as you go a little bit further, then you'll run into Occoquan Bay on the on the right, and then ahead of you ahead of that is the main river, the Potomac River. So this is all Virginia jurisdiction water in here, and it's 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 a storied place to hunt. It's got a lot of duck hunting history behind it. A lot of people have hunted in Belmont Bay for years, and we feel really really fortunate, you know, to be able to hunt in this area. And uh, I mean, I've been this is our 20th year in business, but I've been working this river for 30, and uh, Belmont Bay is like the my backyard, you know, yeah. basically. So. It's like our Susquehanna River, just yeah. Yeah. with a lot, lot more ducks. You know, a lot more ducks. <laughs> Traditionally, <laughs> there's always been a lot of birds working this area, and what you have here is you have like the trifecta. You know, you have the freshwater coming in from the Occoquan Reservoir, it feeds into the Belmont Bay on the north side, Occoquan Bay is on the south side, then that all dumps into the mighty Potomac River. Yep. And it is known as the mighty Potomac. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you have all the flats in the bays that have all of the food and resource for the ducks. You know, you have the freshwater coming out of the reservoir, and then you have the big river, the Potomac, out there. I mean, there's birds trafficking everywhere. Yeah. It's unreal. What kind of ducks are we shooting at today? Well, it depends on where you are from the country. If you're from New York, you call them broadbills. If you're from the Chesapeake Bay Area, you call them blackheads. Um if you want to be a cultured snobby duck hunter, you call them scop. 
and uh, lesser scop and greater scop. And uh, if, but they're widely known as bluebills. So, they're beautiful too. Yes, they yeah, are. they're pretty duck. They are a beautiful duck. And uh, I love the way they work a decoy spread, man. It's just something about it. I know we make mallard calls and GP calls and, uh, believe it or not, we we actually put them to use burling, you know, doing little burl calls at these things. And we also, you know, kill a lot of canvasbacks here. We've killed more canvasbacks this year than we've killed in a long time. And uh, those, those ducks actually respond very well to a mallard call. And we've – I called around two two big bulls yesterday. Man, I just hit a little three or four note comeback call, mallard comeback call, and they, dude, they banked right and were dead in five seconds. So, yep. um <laughs> So you know, but this time of year, we're, we're we had just got we just got a big push of puddle ducks, so we're gonna half my group is now gonna refocus on those. Mm-hmm. We'll half the group will still stay on these uh, these blackheads and the canvasbacks, and the other half's gonna refocus on puddle ducks. You know, mallards and black ducks. Yeah, you have got multiple blinds right in that bay area, like where we're at right here, and we were actually in three different blinds. They having fun running around. Uh, and you also, we actually hunted out of a pontoon blind, which I've never done before, which I found to be fun. Except for, I mean, there was one moment where, there was one moment where Travis came by the pontoon and rocked us. But other than that, <laughs> it was pretty fun. No comment. <laughs> yeah. 60 horsepower, full tilt, come banking in about 40 yards from us. Uh, I mean, it wasn't Well, that you guys drastic, were but. shooting them too easily. I mean, you guys were dropping them. I'm like, let me put some waves up in there so that boat goes rocking. Uh, uh, yeah. I definitely got a bust <laughs> on you because that... Like as far as as far as grip pack calls go, because I've been using I I I grew up like whatever call I could afford, and when you guys came along and I got my first mo cracking, and then I got my big hurt, and started really learning from Travis on maybe on how to sound correct, not just making goose sounds, and then uh, I mean the 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 proof is in the pudding. Didn't you take them somewhere this year and do something big? I mean, didn't you really do something in Virginia? I heard something about. Maybe you could blow a duck call <laughs> somewhere along the line. Um, I was fortunate enough to compete and uh, win the 2018 Virginia State Duck Calling Competition. Because I was and, sick uh, that week. And uh, that qualified me for the 2018 World Championship Duck Calling Competition down awesome. in Stuttgart, Arkansas. That's awesome, bro. And so, you know, it's one of those things where last three years, you know, coming in second place and then getting over that hump. And, you know, just kind of kick the the door open. And, you know, we've been putting in a lot of work. We have a lot more work to put into the competition call. Yeah. But, you know, that's what we're all about. Tell us we can't do something, and we'll prove you wrong. Absolutely. What did that feel like to, to win a, a state-level calling competition? I'll be honest with you. When I was they told standing you that on you the were stage. actually the winner. I was standing on the stage, and I was expecting them to call me at second place. <laughs> and then when they said, you know, Travis Stout, first place, I kind of looked around and uh, kind of soaked in for a little bit, you know. (laughs) Did you reach up, make sure your beard was straight, like make sure it looked good? Oh, it was looking good. Yeah, I figured. (laughs) It was looking good. It looked like a Spartan. Yeah. (laughs) And so, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I thank the good Lord every day for what he's blessed me with and the people he surrounded me with. And, you know, I'm just very, very fortunate to have the friends, family, and support that I do have. It is cool. It's, It's amazing to see the passion that you have for waterfowl hunting. And to be able to get in, to be able to get into a family setting type group with Teddy Carr that has, you know, a century full of background in it, you know. Absolutely, you know, a lot of who I am today is uh, from a lot of the lessons that I've learned in the past, yeah. and uh, I can't thank Teddy enough for everything he's done for me, the opportunities he's given me, even the times where I really annoy him. He stands by Which me. Which is often. <laughs> <laughs> I like testing that, you know. And, uh, yep, yep, yep. Sooner or later I'll learn to keep my mouth shut and keep my head down. And Well, that's, no, you can't do that. That's, <laughs> I, I've hunted with a lot of guides and fished with a lot of guides in my life. And I can't honestly say, and, and it, it might offend some people, but if you're a non-talking, boring guide, and whether you're, you know, doing good or not, catching fish or whatever the case may be, Sometimes the personality of a guide can make an entire guided trip, no matter if it's good or bad, bad oh, weather. Absolutely. And you know, you you got it, man. It's we laughed all morning. <laughs> like, do you want to, you know when we were when we were blind jumping, you know, because Rutten River doesn't go anywhere without taking stuff. We have yeah. bags. Well, we don't bags even use them all. We just bring it with us in case we need cameras and stuff. But just in case, uh, dude, you you always make it fun, man. 
And, you know, even up, it's a long show for the, the people that are listening that hear our Great American Outdoor Show shows. It's a very long week for us. So by the end of the week, you can get, really get burnt out if you're there every day. And Travis and, and his group, Zane, Aaron, are, uh, you know, just to throw some shout outs, the guys that I go to when I'm tired at the end of the day for a laugh because you guys are still kicking strong at the end of the week. <laughs> but they, they never shut up, do they? They don't. <laughs> they no. just never shut I've up. I've been asking Travis to get on the podcast for a while so I can stop talking. I wouldn't even have to do it anymore. <laughs> just send him a headset down and we'll do like the uh, Facebook Live thing. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So I want to ask you guys a question. Will. Sure. What do you think about that? So to, I don't know. I have no words. I and I do a podcast for a living, and uh, that's you're supposed to have words. Words right? are hard right They're now. They're so hard. Um, the, the thing that I loved was from the minute we got here. I mean, obviously, uh, we met over dinner, but uh, or met over lunch rather, but. From the minute we got here, we were like... No, you had it right. Dinner. That's what... <laughs> that, that, you know, that's what growing, it for us. When yeah. I was growing up, it was dinner, man, and then yeah. you ate supper. I don't know how it got changed around, but you said it right. No, so I keep, agree. Where I grew keep up, going, it was like boy. that, too. Keep going. We had brunch, and... Uh, <laughs> now, now you went the totally opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> you just got all yuppie and yeah, yeah. all kinds of... T- 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 we have all kinds of listeners. I mean, that's not even a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For all you listeners out there to eat brunch. <laughs> well, it, yeah, put your loafers on. Put the penny in it. No comment. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so, you know, from the second we got here, we I just obviously we felt very welcome. And uh, and then when we got in the blind, it wasn't like uh, like Stevie was just new and, and, and we all were trying to get him on his first new mm-hmm. birds and and catfish is making sure the cameras and everything are everywhere. We have our attention everywhere, but you guys are so focused and so like like. I love, I love. I guess what I'm getting at is the play-by-play of the birds. Watch this joker. Look at this joker coming in here. He's gonna do it, isn't he? And you know, and you're just talking the whole time, and it's it's so engaging and so fun, and it, you know, and so for you know, having a situation where it can be completely overwhelming, and like Catfish said, there's stuff for days. There's backpacks. There's everything. When it comes time to turn it on, you have our attention. And I just thank you guys so much for doing it that way. It's it's wild to watch guys that do this and love this, not just for a living. Like, take all the money away. Take all all the glory of being a champion caller away. Don't put face paint on ever again. And I still think that these guys would be out here doing it. Yeah. It's wild to hear them like, oh, look, he's going to bank right. He's going to come left. He's going to come around the blind. He's going to be right here, blah, blah. Like, and then it happens. And then it happens. <laughs> like, yeah, like he, Travis told me the first bird I shot this morning, he's like, he's going to be right there. He's going to, you know, back around the back of the blind real low. And it's exactly what happened. It's, it, I mean, it actually helped me get that second to get on target, to get the shot. And it, I'd never seen anybody be able to go kind of just know the area, know the ducks, the way they hunt, you know, because uh, we're typically just watching, you know, mallards and stuff, you know, uh, cupping and landing on ponds you know in the river so it's just totally different these things are coming in behind you they're coming over top of you and they're there one second they're not they look like a fighter jet they they were banking each way in that oh yeah and you know teddy he can explain more about that you know what we see with decoy placement with wind direction with what location blind are in what patterns and so teddy he can definitely explain more about that yeah i mean we we're out here every day so these birds will you know they'll set patterns you know, and they'll start getting in an area and for whatever reason. And uh, food, it's mo- more likely going to be food. And we'll let them build there a couple of days. You know, let them get comfortable. Let them do it for two or three days. Sometimes, man, these boys get annoyed at me because I'll let them load for a week, you know. And as long as we're killing birds in other places, you know, I just let them load. Does, that, then, does that X grow, you mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, it grows in numbers yeah, yeah. Of, of the pattern of sure. the number of birds using it. So, and then I'll go in there and then we'll bust that pattern all the pieces. Gotcha. And kill a bunch of birds and then they'll start a new pattern. And while we're, we'll, we can usually get on something and make it last two, three, four days, but, you know, the key to any duck hunting is wind as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You asked me earlier about the snow. 
Yeah. I hate the snow, man. Right. The it's snow is a pain in a butt, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's romantic. Don't get me wrong. I had these guys out here over there. <laughs> if you it's, have it's, it's, it's romantic. Duck hunting romance is what it is. I mean, they, they hear all this stuff, man. Oh, it's snowing. We're going to kill a bunch of ducks. We sat there Saturday. We never fired a shot Saturday morning right. in the snow. And then the wind picked up. The, the difference being the wind yeah. that afternoon. And the snow was still falling, but the the catalyst was the wind. Right. So we got the wind, man. We got the ducks. So. It's, it's great to learn that because for back home, we just pray for snow with the geese. Like no. when they come out, they if it's snowing, it's well. It's now a, geese is different. Yeah, yeah, geese is a different deal. That's a different bird. I mean, I'm I'm kind of like strictly talking ducks. Yeah, yeah. Snow does affect geese, and we'll put you know do different things to geese yeah. that, that you can plan on. So well, see, that's why I asked you because when I came down here, I would have been like, dude, if it snows, is it better? And I had had no clue. I literally didn't have any clue that snow didn't have an effect on ducks. So it's something I learned. I actually learned a good bit today about uh, uh, just in general on how, first of all, I didn't realize that I've never got to watch a dog work in open water like this, Z-Dog, um, to swim 100 yards out and 100 yards back um, in open water like this. It was extremely impressive and uh, for being, what, eight years old? Yeah, he turns eight in March. Yeah. Super fast swimmer. I was super impressed. He's so well mannered. He does like, you can tell all the little corks and all the different dogs. He just likes to carry the ducks around. He always oh, wants yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since he was a puppy, you know, he's carried something around at yeah. the house. You know, so when he gets out here, he's constantly got to. If you leave a duck on the floor, he's picking it up and he's going to hold it. Yeah, you know? he's so well mannered though. He's super quiet. He sits tight. He does get excited whenever you pull the boat up. I noticed that. Yeah, well, he's he he goes with me on the boat, you know, to chase cripples. Right, right. And he likes that, so he associates that boat with going out. Oh man, we're gonna go out here and we're gonna shoot one. We're gonna chase him down and just blast him. You yep. Know? I saw I saw a little bit of the disappointment on his face whenever Stevie's gun went off earlier, but I think he forgave you <laughs> since you knew. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys got it done pretty quick. I mean, we just had that one little hiccup right there, but after that, man, it happened pretty darn quick, and he was wet. And it truly well, amazes me how. You, you guys just know, like Travis is like, hey, there's some guys up hunting in one of our blinds, but that's like the hot spot. I mean, this was on the way out before I knew anything about what we were doing. He already called it. He's like, we're going to eventually end up back up there to probably finish up, and it'll be pretty quick. And I mean, you, I've never seen that. You called the entire hunt before we even got to the first blind. It's because I learned from the best. Yeah, well, I guess so. stop sucking up, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, we we just uh, that gets back to knowing the patterns. Yeah. That gets back. To, you know, Travis knows what's going on out here. We, you know, we all talk amongst ourselves. And at one point in time, my cousin Ryan and I we had him a crossfire down here. Yeah. I mean, they were bouncing back and forth. You know, I think one flock went into him. He killed two, and then they came down here. And we killed the rest. Wow. You know, earlier. So we got him in a little crossfire, bouncing back and forth, even. So and I I, I even actually called that coming out with uh, Tom, my other guy, one of the other guys that guides for us. I said, you know, I said, if Ryan sets up, I said, do you think we ought to set Travis at the island? He says, oh, man. He says, if we could get him in between the three, it'd be ugly. Yeah. But we knew we were going to catch him in a cross and a cross up between the two blinds. And they shot. They actually were closer to their limit before we were, but we overtook them. I mean, when them birds started coming down on that pontoon boat, man, they were just – 20 at a time at some at sometimes and i wouldn't even i'd let those pass through because those boys i had in there earlier i knew they would flock shoot them and i just focused in on you know singles and pairs and they shot their limit pretty quick we, and we saw a little bit of everything and and some of the more impressive ones was those flocks those massive flocks Oh, well, out at a distance? Yeah, 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 it was pretty impressive, wasn't they're it? They're so impressive. I, I don't know what the numbers would be with those, but they're, I, I don't know. At one point, it was a couple hundred couple up in hundred here, and then I was giving them that hail call, and we peeled off five, yeah. and then two peeled off of the five, and they came right on in, and then that was the first one you shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing to see. Um, you know, when you get a big raft, get up and move, you know, from point A to point B, um, it's nothing to see maybe a thousand, two thousand birds do that. Wow. That's not what we're you know, they're just kinda of relocating. The birds that we're killing are the birds that are breaking off those bigger rafts. Sure. And uh and then they're looking for smaller sets to sit with and uh and usually, you know and then that's when the pattern comes in. We exactly. know where they're going 
when they break off in those little groups. See, and temperatures then, with the patterns, we had that warm split there for the last week and a half. Yeah. The birds were in a loafing pattern. They want safety in numbers because they feel safer with a 1,000 birds. When their temperature drops and yeah. they got to feed to stay warm, their pattern changes to breaking off. They can't compete with the amount of birds in a 1,000 bird raft to right. eat their food. Yeah. They break off and they find little rafts that are in a feeding design i guess you could say mm -hmm. with the decoys and they're like well there's only 30 over there i'll get a lot of food if i eat with them instead of a thousand it's so true that like we, our it's like, back like our uh, dinner today <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> we, just, we saw you guys yeah. we came right in on it let's so for all our listeners real quick if they would want to come hunt down here with you guys when does the season typically like start towards and then and end and how do they get a hold of you? Well, we start resident goose season September one. Mm -hmm. uh, that overlaps with two weeks of uh, teal season in September. Then we have four days of October mm -hmm. general duck season. Then we'll have the uh, second split, which starts in November, gotcha. which is about a week and a half, you know, two weeks something like that. Starts the Saturday before Thanksgiving usually. And yep. then uh, then what we call the real season starts about mid December okay. and runs to the end of January, which is what we're in. That's what we're in right now, and then after the season ends on the 27th this year, we'll do about another three week uh, three weeks of uh, resident goose hunting, gotcha. up right up to February 15th. So we're actually duck hunting from September 1 to February 15th. Now, and, is and, is your goose hunting out here? Is it field hunting? Uh yeah. We it won't be on the water here. We it's to the west of us in fields. We hunt out in Orange County, Madison County, Virginia, gotcha. and it's a Southern James Flyway, gotcha. and uh, it's still a three bird limit. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it'll go to five birds. It's already at five birds now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so we'll do that, and um, the best way to get a hold of us is just go to the website, you know, Outdoor Action. Yep, uh, that's outdoor-action.biz, yeah, outdoor B-I-Z. B -I -Z. Yep. And then you can also get a hold of us on Facebook, too. Yeah. You know, you can message Outdoor Action on Facebook. You can message me, Travis Stout. You yeah. know, or either. Get you guys going. Not only that, also you can connect through GP Calls. I think most of your listeners, you know, kind of probably know GP Calls more than they do Outdoor Action. Yeah, most of our listeners have heard about you and a bunch about GP Calls. I, right? Actually, I get about 50 emails a year uh, through the call company wanting to book you know, duck hunts. Mm -hmm. So, so people can get a, get a hold of us you know, that way too. So, what if, real quick too, because I know one of the biggest things that people ask me whenever we do these things is, what would you, what would you bring if you weren't a like a proficient waterfowler just wanted to hunt Virginia? What if you were coming down here? What would, what would you have to bring other than like a twelve gauge shotgun? Well. Um, I like to say get a floating gun case, your, your, your weapon. Of course, you got to have all your license and, you know, your Virginia waterfowl stamp and your federal duck stamp. Uh, get a little blind bag or a knapsack to put uh, gloves, extra pair of gloves in there or something. Uh, your ammo, carry ammo in it, maybe your thermos of coffee or snacks or anything. Moses family jerky. Yeah. Right. And uh, I, this buns. is this this is the the, the question dogs. that just absolutely drives me crazy. And I and, and and the clients have won. Okay, I just I'll throw this out here right now. Mm -hmm. The clients have won. <laughs> the question I get asked all the time: Do I need waiters? Hmm, Stevie. Hmm. Here's the answer to that for all you guys out there listening. If you're a damn duck hunter, you should good. wear waders. Yes. Waders is part of duck hunting. <laughs> if you don't like wearing waders, get used to wearing waders. Go buy a pair, wear them to the office, wear them to bed. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get used to wearing waders, you're a damn duck hunter, for God's sakes. Wear a set of waders. And, yes, bring your waders. There you go. All so right, if... I, I'm off the soapbox. And, and you won. You win because now. I'm going to get like 16 phone calls. Do I need more waiters? I, I listen. I, I man, I'm talking to 30, 40 people a night, and 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 I and I've given up, guys. You win. So go ahead and ask if you need to bring your waiters. Yes. And I'll say, please. Bring if you your got waiters. them, bring your waiters. Yeah, That's that, the standard answer. If you got them, please bring your waiters. It sounds like the new GP sticker for the back window. To me, bring your waiters. GP call. Oh, dude, that's good right there. I nice. like that. I like Hashtag. that. You gonna charge me royalties on that? Absolutely not. B Y O W. B Y O W. Bring your own waiters. Well, boys, I hate to bring break this party up, but yeah, we're losing light. Teddy. Yeah, we're losing light, and we gotta pick some decoys up. It was a pleasure having you guys yes, come sir. down and hunt with you. me, Stevie. Congratulations you on your first duck. Yeah, had a blast. Yeah, man, it was all. We good. limited out, right? Yeah, we, we, yeah. we shot a limit of blackheads. We did so. 
We did. That was good. We're going home with a Kohler full. What a yeah. beautiful you day. Go. Absolutely. Couldn't Fine. ask for a nicer day. Travis, thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. You guys are more than welcome. And thank you to everybody at Rutten River Pursuits Podcast for coming down. And, uh, Our yeah. pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you guys at the sports show. Yes, absolutely. Sir. All right, man. Rig and weedless. <laughs> Peace. I can tell you one thing right now. The rule is on this podcast that we're not editing anything that Travis says. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Z Dog, you ready? All right, what? you want the intro? Hey guys, this is on Catfish here. We're around the Sonic Campfire. We're now. back. <laughs> I definitely need a beer. <laughs> I can't thank Teddy enough for everything he's done for me, the opportunities he's given me, even the times where I really annoy him. He stands by me. Which is often. (laughs) I like testing that, you know. And, uh, yep, yep, yep. Sooner or later I'll learn to keep my mouth shut and keep my head down. No, I agree. Where I grew up, I was like that too. Keep going. We had brunch. And uh, <laughs> now, now you went the totally opposite direction. <laughs> you just got all yuppie and yeah, yeah. all kinds of. T- 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 we have all kinds of. Listeners. I mean, that's not even a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For all you listeners out there to eat brunch. <laughs> well, it, yeah. Put your loafers on. Put the yeah. penny in it. No comment. Yes. Yeah. It's because I learned from the best. Yeah. Well, yeah, so. stop sucking up, Travis. Yeah. <laughs>